Okay. Yay. Megan Lindsay. Hey, girl. In the hizzy. <laughs> you got some pink in your hair right now. I do. I am. Um, I There's keep, a purple. I don't know. I keep color under my um, my sink at home. Just like color and like, uh, what do you call it? Um, I can't think. My brain. Um, what's it called? Uh, hair dye? No. Color and. Color and. Toner. Toner. I keep toners under my sink. So then I just put it in my conditioner and then whatever it turns out, I just go with it. So you have like really, really blonde hair. Is it hard to keep that up? Mm -hmm. How often do you have to do it? Like every four weeks. It's awesome. Yeah. It's your signature. Thanks. Totes. (laughs) It totes is. I love it. I love it too. I can't, like I've tried to go dark. It doesn't work. You're you're too bright to be dark. Not that dark isn't beautiful because no. beautiful dark is beautiful. But you just it works for it some works. people. But this works for you. Thanks. Because not everyone can do platinum. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, so I want to start off with a few questions, mm-hmm. and then just tell me what the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. If you could come back as any artist in their heyday, any time period, who would it be and why? Oh man, um, probably Dolly. Does every girl say this? I bet every girl says this. No, I haven't. This is only the second time I've asked this question. Really? I asked you and Frankie Ballard. Okay, cool. So <laughs> he would probably wouldn't say Dolly. <laughs> um, you know, I think she just had such, she had the career that I dream of having. Okay, tell me why. Because I think she got to kind of really just ride that line of like doing country music and doing pop music and movies at movies and actors. Like she just did everything. Yeah. And she was such a smart businesswoman and um, she just really knew what she wanted and and she went for it. Yeah. I think that's rad. <laughs> it's totally rad. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah, because I think you should do acting. I, I'm working on that, actually. You are? Mm-hmm. Details. Well, that's, I can give you a few details. <laughs> okay. What are they? Because your no. new music video, Exes and Friends, wow. Thank hot, you. hot, hot. And, I mean, I feel like that's some acting in there. We have to, we'll get to your cameo guest. It was mm-hmm. a bachelor. Mm-hmm. Get to that later. <laughs> but tell me about the acting. It's fun. You know, I got offered a part on Broadway and I started. Um, Did you take it? Well, it, it's a long sorted tale. It's it's we've moved on to another another thing. But mm-hmm. I um, I started taking acting lessons like about a year ago. And with this coach named Bridget Berger, who actually ended up directing my music video. But um, yeah, I don't know. I like it. I really like it. I never thought about doing it. And a bunch of people have always said, hey, you should probably do some acting and I was like oh I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but um but I like it I I enjoy it so we'll see what happens but I've got a few few things cooking so you irons in the fire yeah okay <laughs> I can see you having a career like Dolly yeah seriously well I hope so I'm working on it <laughs> I'm not getting any younger yeah but you know I really don't think that matters I don't either everyone always put this pressure on age and I used to think age was everything when I first yeah. moved to town I really don't believe that. I believe your destiny is your destiny. And as long as you keep doing it, it will happen how it's supposed to. I think so. Do you? I do. I really do. I really do. I got, um, I, I, you know, we all have our moments, I think, especially as women in this oh, yeah. town where you're like, oh, God, I, I'm 30 and I'm 31. Oh, God. I know. You I'm know? old. <laughs> I mean, that's so People young. put so much pressure on you, though. But I, yeah, I think that I'm only getting better. And I, I f- agree. I feel like I'm kind of at my best at this point. So in everything, like yeah, my mentally, physically, the whole thing. Like you are just radiating, like you. Thank you. And another thing, I was, I'm just so many things I want to talk about. <laughs> you have been speaking your mind, like how you feel from your heart, and mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people don't do that. And yeah. you said you said we were at a party, and you finally like I don't. What did you say exactly? I was like, how did you get to this place? I think it just comes from well, a growing up and figuring out who you are and what you believe and what you want and what you don't like and you know there's a lot that goes into it but I think ultimately for me it's like being an independent artist like I don't have anybody to answer to I don't have anything to lose you know and I think kind of liberating it's very liberating and it's very um I think when you start to do that and you start to see the effects of that of just being like completely authentic and saying exactly what you want to say and just being really honest I think that you realize oh this really resonates with people totally and people are really into this so it's like then it's like almost like affirmation like okay I'm doing the right thing like I just need to stay on this track because this is what's real yeah because it almost takes it falling apart and having to get to that place where you Mm -hmm. are on your own because you've had record deals you've had hit singles you've 
obviously you were runner up on The Voice. You won mm. Can You Duet with your former duet partner mm-hmm. back in Still Magnolia. Days. So much stuff. <laughs> but like, and you've always had a huge team of people probably telling you how you need to be presented, right? Right. Yeah. It, it, it was like that, I think, up until like when Still Magnolia broke up and um, we actually continued to tour after we left the record label for a couple of years. But it was, um, yeah, it was liberating not having all of that and just all of those, you know, demands and the, you know, telling me how to brush my teeth and <laughs> like what, you know, whatever it was, it was like, it's like, oh, wow, I can actually like just be me. And so I think that being me really happened when I finally completely broke off from the band and started doing my own thing. It really allowed me to just, I don't know, just to be able to explore and figure it out and like be like, okay, this is who I am. Cause you have a monster voice. Your voice is Thank you. huge. It is like, <laughs> It's so soulful, and then this range and rasp that is out of this world. Like, seriously, it is so soulful. How ha, how has this journey led you to your sound? Like, what would you say being you is officially, now that you've had all this exploration? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> uh, you know what? I think that a lot of it is just has come with writing, writing songs. And so just feeling like I can write about the things I I'm passionate about and the things I want to write about and then and then just in the studio just be able to let go and just really sing because I feel like when you're in a duet you're always a duo you're always you know trying to accommodate the other person mm-hmm. and you're trying not to I'm, I'm the type of person that I'm always very careful like I don't want to overstep somebody or I always want people to feel like they're important and like I just kind of oh I'm like that in every situation in life and so when it comes to singing with another person I'm like oh I don't want to be too much I don't want to be too this or too that and it's like when you finally just don't care (laughs) and you're like I'm just gonna be me I'm just just gonna let let it out out. yeah jinx yeah right (laughs) (laughs) then you know then it's like wow okay this is how I'm supposed to be singing this is like this This is is my voice yeah and so it got it it's just been I don't know it's been a journey like figuring that out but I feel like I'm finally like especially with this new single and the new record that's coming out it's like okay I figured this is me you know like Mm -hmm. I feel so um good about it so I love that Thanks. So you're from New Orleans. I so am. So did that play into your, who you are as an artist? For sure. Yeah. I think um, for me, it was like, I grew up in bands, singing in bands, running bands from the time I was like 14. And so um, I was always playing with guys that were like in their 50s <laughs> 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 who had been playing in New Orleans for years. And so I, I feel like I learned a lot through that and um I played you know I played everything from church to the bars at that Mm -hmm. age and so that's a education when you're 14 it is yeah New Orleans too you learn a lot (laughs) I mean a lot I'm sure and there's a lot you know it's it's interesting growing up in a place that's so multicultural and there's just so much um the the there's so much music and it's just so different from anything else in the world and so I think I learned a lot about singing from you know just soulful singing really and you said like your inspirations are aretha whitney yeah um the soul yeah i think with it's some dolly with some dolly mixed in yeah <laughs> i think it's a matter of like i was always attracted to big voices obviously and Were i you always born with that big voice or did you develop it um I think I I think I was born with a lot of it. I mean, I think it's obviously developed <laughs> over time, but you know, I used to screech up in my room you just did? trying to hit notes, yeah. My mom was like, "Um, okay. <laughs> That's good." <laughs> so you would literally like practice mm-hmm. hitting those insane notes. Oh, every day, yeah. I'd come home and from school and it's like the first thing I would do. Really? Just go up in my room and just sing for like 2 hours or something, yeah. It was just all I wanted to do ever. But I um my mom bought me a karaoke machine when I was like 10. And I think that that like really set it off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Cause I never, I didn't, I didn't play an instrument. And I think a lot of that probably has to do with growing up. Like I just never had a good lesson mm-hmm. and I was just, I was just frustrated with it. And I was like, I just don't think this is for me. I just wanted to sing. So. Your instrument was your voice. Right. Yeah, totally. Okay. So you grew up in new Orleans. What was the, your upbringing like like was music a big part of your family or are you the only one that sings um you know my mom sang when she was a kid and like her and her sister kind of had a duo and um they did more like gospel type music okay. she grew up in Kentucky my grandmother sang my grandma was okay. like kind of a soul gospel singer 
Um, so it kind of runs in the family. But no one like pursued it. Nobody really pursued it. Yeah. It's kind of a thing where my mom was like, oh, you want to sing? Cool. Let's do it. You know, and, and my parents were really supportive. And so that was nice. Do you have siblings? I do. I have a brother and two sisters. Nice. Yeah. Now where are they? Uh, my brother's in New Orleans and my two sisters are in Lafitte. Okay. Just like the bayou. <laughs> nice. Everybody's down in the bayou. You got Cajun all over your blood. Yeah. You know what? It's funny because it's it's uh my parents both moved there from other places. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's just uh by association. <laughs> <laughs> kind of picked up some of that stuff. And do they sing or are they you're the only one? Um no, they don't sing. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of like the l- the lone wolf here, I guess. <laughs> so you were playing shows, doing all this. You even opened for Blake Shelton, which I think is funny, when yeah. you're like 14. Yeah, when I was a kid. <laughs> that is really funny. Uh huh. Your whole voice experience, which I want to get to after we talk about Can You Do It, is crazy to me, though, because Blake recognized you when you auditioned for The bo- the Voice. Like, he turned around, he's like, oh, my God, I know yeah. you. Isn't that funny? Yes. Was that surreal? Um. Yeah, and, like, I knew... I knew he would recognize me when he turned around. I was so nervous. I mean, I was like, I think when you do something like that, it's nerve wracking no Uh, matter what. Yeah. Well, and the pressure of like, Mm -hmm. what if a chair doesn't turn around? That was terrifying. But all of them turn around. But Blake, which he ended up stealing you later. Yeah. Which is (laughs) the best. It's so funny, man. I just was terrified. So I don't know. I don't really remember how I was feeling other than scared to death. But (laughs) um, I I think it's worse when you've had a career because you're like, yeah, it is, and it's and it's also like you you feel like oh god, people know who I am, and you've already had success, so mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, you know how it, you know how this plays out too, right? So I'm like, I I honestly felt in that moment like if I don't get a chair, my career's over. <laughs> You did? Even though it's probably, you know, you you can't think like that, and I know it's not true. It's just that's all I could think in that moment. I'm like, okay. They're not turning around because it took them forever to turn around. They didn't turn around until the very the last worst, minute. worst, nerve wracking. I think they do this on purpose. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> the drama. <laughs> it's just, well, I mean, obviously they're going to turn around. Your voice, you can't well, not turn around for your voice. Well, and but I feel like there's so many good singers on there that don't get a chair. So I'm like, what if I'm not what they're looking for today? You know, yeah. I don't know. You just never know. It's all subjective. So I, uh, I was scared, but. I was glad they, they turned around. <laughs> and it's kind of cool because you started off your career with Can You Duet, but mm-hmm. you were in a duet, a yeah. duo. So you had like the support of someone else. Right. Was that, did that make that competition easier to go through because you had someone to lean on? Josh, who you met singing karaoke yeah. in Nashville, mm-hmm. which is awesome. <laughs> so funny. Um, Those stories really do happen. Like It's like, funny. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like I grew, well, and it's like my mother bought me a karaoke machine, which is kind of what started this whole thing. And then it's like, and then I was in bands and I moved to Nashville and I'm like back to singing karaoke again as a job you know to which make money leads to you finding your duo partner right which leads to a record deal. it's just you know like you can't you can't go through life like being like oh this is how i'm gonna do it because it's always so messed up you just and never know is different yeah it's crazy so mm-hmm. um but yeah so we did we ended up um we got together and um we decided to audition for the show called can you do it which was on cmt and um we were like, it, and the thing was, we had just gotten back from London record. Like we went to London and recorded and we were like an indie rock band is what we considered ourselves. So we were like, wow. we're indie rock duo. Right. <laughs> and then we get this London. How London? <clears throat> we had a manager. This is, we have a crazy story, but <laughs> I don't know. We met this guy who was a manager. It was from London. And, um, he was like, I'm going to send you over there to do some recording. You know, this guy owes me a favor. And so we went, we actually went to London with, Five hundred dollars to our name, which is insane when you go international and travel. <laughs> like you <laughs> want to go with more than five hundred dollars cash in your pocket. Um, but we were like, you know, twenty and didn't care. So we went over there and we recorded with this guy, Fraser T. Smith, who actually has won like Grammys for like the Adele record and stuff since then, which Dang. is hilarious. Um, so we recorded a, cu- a couple sides with him, and and just that was kind of what we thought our sound thing was direction yeah Yeah, and and when we got back it just didn't it wasn't a good situation with the manager and so we parted ways and I mean literally Josh was back to valet parking cars I was back to the karaoke bar and I'm like I mean I just remember being so depressed and I'm like I don't know you know what I'm doing I've been here for five years I got you know it's like what am I doing with my life and then um, we got this call about the show and they're like do you want to audition and we're like well it's country but we could probably put some fiddle on our songs, you know, <laughs> whatever. Like we're like at this point, we're just 
you know, heating our apartment with our oven, you know, <laughs> so we're like desperate. <laughs> we're like, okay, we'll do it, <laughs> you yeah. know. And and we got on and we ended up winning the whole thing. Winning the whole thing. Right? <laughs> the whole thing. How on earth did that feel? It was crazy. You know, I mean, that's a big deal. Going from seeing mm-hmm. karaoke, just having a dream and knowing what you're capable of to actually materializing it on yeah. a TV show, landing a major label deal, a big machine, huge record label. Yeah. How does that feel when your dreams are starting to come true? Oh, my God. It was surreal at the time, you know, and I, I'm always like, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in affirmations and writing things down and really totally. visualizing things. And I mean, I remember that year I crossed off everything on my list. So you had been making lists since then. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was, and that was, and that's the only thing that got me through, you know, heating my apartment with my oven. So you really were heating. Your oh, apartment with absolutely. Your oven? Yeah. <laughs> we were, safe? no, it's not. <laughs> we were broke as a joke, man. We couldn't get our, we couldn't get our gas turned on. And so we were like, well, I guess we'll just open the oven and heat it up for a while. You know, I mean, ridiculous. <laughs> like, Ugh, us and our two dogs and and this little tiny apartment um but it was you know you do what you got to do aren't you glad for those memories though absolutely no i think that i I was talking to tyler about this the other day because i'm like and he's your boyfriend and producer Mm -hmm. right yeah they're making great music thank you love it (laughs) but we were talking about that you know i think that it's almost i feel like when you come from nothing and you have to make something it's like you have more drive and more purpose so it actually probably made made me a better artist for sure i believe that 100 mm-hmm. <laughs> percent. so you win can yeah. you do it yeah so we win and you get a record deal. and how is naomi judd because she was one of the judges oh my god well she's become like a like a fairy i call her my fairy godmother because we still we're still very much in touch and i just adore that woman so she's been really a guiding light in my life really honestly yeah what has she how how so i feel like well even with the voice like when i i went over to her place right before I, I got the call to go on the voice and right after, I guess I got the call to go on the voice and she was like, well, you need to go see this guy, Ron Browning, his vocal coach. She's like, I think he's really going to help you. And she's like, and I want to get you into therapy. And like, she's just like <laughs> thinking of all these things that she thought I needed. And she wanted to get you ready. She wanted to get me ready, like mentally and vocally and everything. And so she was like, and you know, and she knows my, my situation with, uh, you know, being a, a starving artist. And so she's like, let me pay for your lessons. Let me pay for your therapy. Oh. So she's just like, and taking me shopping. I mean, she's just been an amazing mentor to wow. me. Wow. Yeah. Because she didn't have to do that. Like No. She's just like an incredible human. She wow. really is. She really cares. And I think she really wants to... Um, wants to help and she likes to pour into young people so it's she's a she's a good human that's amazing yeah so what another gift to have gotten from can you do it right <laughs> i know well even during the show i mean she would like i would get these like uh surprise gifts backstage and they'd be like it's from someone anonymous and the producers are like super annoyed because she's not supposed to be bringing <laughs> gifts to contestants when you're competing so she had her favorite <clears throat> I mean, I think so, but <laughs> <laughs> she did it with a few different people. But I was like, oh, my gosh, I would just get like, you know, like random, like a dress in my dressing room. And I'm like, who's this from? And it would be like, you know, I'm like, I think I know. But <laughs> oh, I love that. She's just a sweetheart. So you win that show. You go straight into having a major label record deal. Yeah. And then you release a song and it goes to what? Like uh, top five? Top four, yeah. T- t- uh, number three. Number three on the chart, yeah. Your first debut single, and it's the highest yeah. charting debut single from a, a male-female duet. And like, is it of all times? I think, yeah. I think at the time. I'm, I don't know if anybody's done it since, but yeah, at the Are time. Are there even any male-female duets, duets no. right now? No, no. I don't think so. I, I mean, guess Sugar Thompson Land Square. was for a second. Yeah, but not really. Yeah. It's crazy. So y'all have had, at one point, probably still, had the highest charting debut single from a male-single single. Male, Male, female. female. Yeah. Duo. Of all times. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? What? (laughs) So you go from singing karaoke to London to thinking your life is over to winning a show and now having like one of the highest breaking history in country music. Yeah. In a year? Um, yeah. Or less than a year. It was like, yeah, it was like nine months. So, I mean, that made you feel good. Yeah. (laughs) We felt, you know what? It was, it was so, it's so funny because I feel like we felt like such underdogs coming in and just like we worked because we had worked so hard. I mean, we'd been in town for so long and we're like, oh, is it ever going to happen? And then, you know, and then to finally see some some things happening. Yeah, I felt like we just I don't know. We were kind of beside ourselves, really. We were working so hard at that time. I think we couldn't really appreciate it. 
Because when that happens, it's like a rocket. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just so much work. And radio tour is so grueling. And, you know, it's like we'd be out on the road for 40 some days at a time. And then we'd come home for a day and we'd sleep and we'd go back out. And so Mm -hmm. we were just like, oh, my God, it just didn't feel it almost didn't feel real because it was like we were so sleep deprived. It was like, oh, we are in a dream. (laughs) You know, we're constantly walking in a dream, you know. Mm -hmm. So but it was an it was it was crazy. And y'all had a couple more radio singles and uh, another top 10, right? Or top 15? Yeah. Something in the, like the top 20. I think. Yeah. So yeah, it was. And uh, that's where you dress as Sandy. Huh? Uh, Sandy from Greece. Oh yeah. Yeah. And l- last night again. I we love that, that video. Song. I love that song that's too. A bowling alley. We wrote that song, um, like years and years before when we were trying to do the, um, the, the thing with the, with the, um, indie rock thing. Oh so. yeah. A lot of those songs were songs that we had. So it's like, I think we wrote all but three songs on our record. That's amazing. Yeah, that was kind of cool that they let us do that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have some success. You're breaking records in country music. And then, like every great story, there's (laughs) always the highs. And then why is it right when a high happens? I feel like there's always a wave Mm -hmm. and it it hits a little bit of a rough patch. It always comes back up. But so you were on this high and then all of a sudden, you guys kind of break up. Yeah. And things sort of start falling apart. Like what happened there and how did you deal with that? The transition? It was really hard, you know, because Josh and I were a couple, obviously, through all this. So you were a couple yeah. musically and personally. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were together. And so um, it was hard because we'd been together for like almost six years. And then we were, do- you know, doing this thing together. And he had obviously his problems and his demons. And I was just trying to um, hold the ship together. Mm-hmm. So. It was a lot, you know, um, it ended up, we were supposed to go on the Reba tour oh. and, oh my God. um, Are you serious? yeah, we were going out with Reba at the end of, end of 2011 and, um, Josh ended up going to rehab like a week before we were supposed to head out. And so, um, you know, the label like came to me and they're like, do you still want to do the tour? They're like, you're still contracted. You, you know, we need you to go out. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing this by myself so now. you went out solo on the Reba tour. I did. I called my friend James Otto <clears throat> to come sing a couple songs with me in the set because I felt, we felt, you know, we all talked about it with management and the label and we were like, we should do something else just for the fans. Yeah, so that is like, you have to think fast on <coughs> what you're going to do. It was like in a couple of days I put it together. It basically um, went in and rehearsed with the band, the song Solo, which I hadn't sang by myself in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Especially duet songs, you know, yes. it's like, it's kind of crazy. And so, and then James came in and he sang, um, Keep On Loving You With Me, which was our hit. And um, he did a couple of his own songs that I sang on with him on and then, um, Yeah. So we just, I went from, you know, being completely devastated and heartbroken to having to go straight back out on the road. Um, I guess you didn't have much time to think about it. I didn't. It was nice. I didn't. And I think it's better that I think it is better that way. It is. It is. It's so hard, man. Sometimes you just don't know. I think you don't know how strong you are until you have to go through something like that. And then you're like, okay, I can do anything. Did that make you kind of feel (laughs) fearless at that point? Yeah, I think so. I think give you your own strength. Mm-hmm. personally like now you couldn't have josh to like rely on like yeah. it was all you yeah it, it was to be honest with you at that time it was almost a little bit um r- i was a lot of a re- relief because mm-hmm. i knew exactly where he was yeah <laughs> like okay i know exactly where you are i know exactly what you're doing i don't have to worry about you mm-hmm. and i can just do my thing and be me and so that was like my first taste of that and did you you were fine with it like did you like I, it I was, I was fine with it. I was also, you know, going, yeah, I was, oh, I was, I was crying myself to sleep every night after the show. It's very much that, you know, I felt like a real still Magnolia, (laughs) you know, I lived right into it. I'm like, okay, you You know, know. I do believe people live into their names. I do too. I do too. I'm like, why did I do this to myself? Um, (laughs) I did not even think about that. Yeah. I I mean, cause it's like, you're just, you're just trying to hold it all together in front of everybody. And, but at the same time, you know, I had been doing that for years with, with the duo so i felt you know it wasn't anything new for me really it finally just yeah broke down yeah it kind of imploded really so after that was that when you're like okay i am gonna go solo i was and there was a a six month period where we just kind of didn't do anything and um you know, we after about six months, we were like, and we got out of our record deal, which was, you know, a whole process. And which it's like, those are that's always crazy because, mm-hmm. you know, you've wanted this record deal forever. And then they can get messy when stuff starts changing and people are involved. It does. And it does. And, and we came off a TV show, which is a really hard deal to get out of. 
Yeah. Um, so it was a lot, you know, trying to get through that. And finally, when we got on the other side of that. We were, you know, after paying attorneys and everything, we're like, we really need to go back on the road together <laughs> and make some money. <laughs> yeah. So we started touring again and we toured for about a year and a half together after we left the, the label. So, um, yeah, which was really hard because we weren't together personally. Oh, man. And we started dating other people. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, this is torture. I know. I don't know why I did this to myself. Oh, my God. Were you dying? Yeah, a little. I mean, a little and no, because I think at that point it was like it had played out for so long that we were both so over it. And maybe it was kind of nice to have the comfort of the friendship to kind of wean yourself off of it. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And and it, um, you know, we were we were cool. You know, we were cool with each other. You know, I started dating Tyler. He started dating this other girl. And so they would come out on the road sometimes. I mean, we were total weirdos. I'm like, are we like living a country music song or what? <laughs> like we are like, well, you said you love the stories of country music. I do. You have lived into everything you've loved about country music. You've yeah. actually lived it though. Yeah. I've lived it. The which, pain of it all too. Yeah. Yeah. Glory and pain. <laughs> <laughs> Man. You are Dolly. I'm crazy. Yeah. No, you're Dolly. Yeah. I'm trying to be. <laughs> well, you're, you're living the life. For it. Yeah. So you are actually living your life like Dolly. Yeah. So that's now the that goal, we, right? <laughs> that you said you wanted it and look yeah, at right. your life. I mean, you've now been on TV. Mm-hmm. You've had hit songs. You've gone from a duo, which she had like a trio at one point. And yeah. like you've changed your career, but you've always stayed in it. Yeah. And then so after this, OK, so you kind of you're dating other people. On yeah. living on the same bus right doing the career <laughs> coming out of the record deal major transition I yeah mean, can you even process what's happening no <laughs> <laughs> i think you just kind of you take it day by day and you just have to live in the moment you know and just do what you have to do you did know? you learn how to live in the moment really in that time period i think so i i i did and i didn't i feel like um i learned more about that through the voice process, actually. Okay. That's kind of when I really started to catch on to that whole thing. But um, maybe I knew more than I thought I knew. I don't know. You know, you just kind of you just kind of go with it. I was kind of going with the flow at that time. I feel like you have a way about you mm -hmm. to always <laughs> be chill with stuff. Like, <laughs> you have a way, like, I lose my mind. And, like, mm -hmm. I sometimes, like, freak out. And, like, I might even, like, re react too intensely. I feel like you can, even if you're freaking out in your head, like, you have a cool vibe about you all the time. Like you keep Thank your cool. You. I try. How do you do that? I don't know. I do think that it's, it's, it's served me for sure. Yeah. Cause going through everything I've been through, I think it would have been really hard if I wasn't that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I don't know, you know, and I, it's, I've just, I've definitely had to take a lot on because of that, because it's like, Oh, she's the one that keeps it together. You can handle it. Yeah. She's the one that can handle it. She has to be the one, you know? And so that's hard. It's a lot of weight to carry, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I feel like, you know, if that's my gift and that's what I'm <laughs> supposed to be doing, then, you know, you just accept it. I don't know. So what happened after you toured for a couple of years with yeah. Steel Magnolia and now you, you just hit a point where you're like, okay, we've, we've run this course. Yeah. I think 2013, I was like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm just like, I want to make my own record. I want to just see if I can, cause it's really, it was a real risk for me, you know, cause I knew, I knew there was security in the Steel Magnolia brand and what we had built. And I knew that I could tour on that name. And you didn't want it's starting over, really it's starting over. Yeah, it's it's really starting over. And I was terrified. And I was like, God, what if I can't pay my rent? What if, you know, um, it was a big leap of faith for sure. But I know, you know, I've also always been a believer in like things. Great things don't happen unless you take risk. And so totally. I was like, screw it. You know, I'm just going to go out <laughs> there and try to do this thing on my own. And so um, Tyler and I went in the studio and we um, recorded this EP and um, I started booking dates by myself, which was kind of terrifying. And but. you, were, so, and dates showed up. And dates showed up, yeah. I think that when you are fearless and mm -hmm. you let things go and you just kind of, um, you have to let God work. And so. You do. You, you have do. to be willing. I have gotten to this point in my life, too, where I almost feel like I want to scream it from the rooftops. Yeah. You have, like, it's not called a leap of faith for nothing. Like you yeah. literally have to dive into the black unknown. Yeah. And pray to God that you land on something. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's, ter and it's terrifying because the, uh, the reality is at the end of the day, like we don't have control of anything. No, we really don't. You can stay in your safe little world, but you will never reap what was really meant for you. Yeah. 
I agree. I then that's that's where I was. I was like, you know what? I'm either gonna like I'm not happy. Yeah. So what is the point? Totally. You can pay your bills and not be happy, or yeah. you can try something and and see how it goes. You know. And I I I truly believe that when you let go and really, I know it sounds cheesy, but let God. I agree. It, it's it's a real thing, you know, and I think he will start to work on your behalf if when you're when you let him. OK, so date started showing up. You yeah. started playing on your own solo. Mm-hmm. You made your own solo EP. Yeah. And this is when did you start coming into who you were as an artist? Like, really? It was the tip of the iceberg, I think. You know, I, I, I you know, of course, as it was happening, I'm like, oh, I totally know who I am now. <laughs> You know, I'm like, oh, I've got this all figured out. This is my sound. And it's like, and then I looking back, I'm like, this is not my sound. But (laughs) it was a start. Yes. You know, and I think we all start somewhere and and you just keep, keep growing. Um, But it, you know, it was a start and it got me um, kind of, it was a boost of confidence to realize like, okay, I can do this, you know. Mm -hmm. And And do it well. Well, thank you. No, you can't. Like, it it was well received. It was a great, like, great project. Like, it was really, when it came out, when you came out doing your solo stuff, I was like, all right then. This is great. Thanks. Yeah, I just, you know, we and we were doing it all independently. That was the other thing. And it's like, which is also terrifying. Um, Oh, isn't it? (laughs) Especially when you come from a big major label Mm -hmm. team with all the money, all the stuff. And then, like, it's just back to you yeah it's pretty crazy (laughs) it's there's so much goodness that comes with it though I think just as far as um for me it was like it was very liberating because I was like I'm just gonna do what I want to do I'm gonna wear what I want to wear I'm gonna make the record I want to make I'm gonna just be completely me you know and that was that was kind of the thing and so even if I don't know what that is yet yeah (laughs) it's like I'm just putting it out there and so and so we did and and it was a great start I think and your style, speaking of wear what you want to wear, you've always had such a style. Thank you. Like, <laughs> like I love it. It's like crop tops, tight, like spandex pants, but colorful. Yeah. Like your body's so beautiful. And like, I just love the way you dress it. <laughs> You're so sweet. I really do. <laughs> like you've always had your own style. When I think of you, I definitely associate you with clothes too. Because yeah. it's so much of who you are. I love clothes. I love anything that has to do with clothes or makeup or hair or fashion. <laughs> Expression. Yeah, I do. I think it's I think it's important. Well, and plus I feel like it's so much of who you are as an artist. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's, you know, this is who I am here. That's the first thing people see about you. So. So then you do this and now here you go on the voice. Mm-hmm. Does the voice come next? Is that what happens next? Yeah, that happens next. It 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 was about a year before the voice called. Um but I into 2014, I um I got a call from a friend who was working with um, Audrey Morrissey, who's the executive producer of The Voice. And he was like, I was just playing like one of your songs in my office. He's like, and Audrey came in and she asked me if you were somebody I was sending her to audition. And he was like, are you interested in doing something like this? And I'm like, I didn't even think I qualified. Yeah. I'm like, well, I've had a career, you know, do I even qualify for something like that? You know, and I was actually in line um, at Panera Bread. (laughs) And uh, I was like, let me call you back. I want to think about this. And I went to check out and my total was 1111, which is tattooed on the back of my neck, which is a thing. Uh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> so you felt like it was like a little sign saying, totally. This is, well, this is right. Anytime I have ever seen that, it's always like, and I've seen it for years now. It's like, I feel like that means I'm on the right track. I have full body chills. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I so did too. That's your sign. That's my sign. So you didn't even have to think about it. No, I was like, I'm supposed to go. Oh, <gasps> what a relief <laughs> to have gotten that sign though. Yeah. And how great that you're open to looking for him. Yeah. I think that, um, that was like the defining moment. I was like, I ended up calling the casting people back and I'm like, yeah, I'll come out. I'll do it. And so they were like, well, we need you, you know, this date. And I'm like, Oh, this month, like next <laughs> week. And they're like, why is it always so fast? Yeah. That stuff? It's like, can you tell me by tomorrow? I'm great. Well, you're going to flight yeah. the, in two days. <laughs> yeah. They're like next week, we're flying you to Los Angeles. And so I <laughs> packed my bag and I'm like, because I was at this point where I'm like, what do I have to lose? Yeah. What else is next? I don't know. I'm just touring and putting out this record and stuff on my own. And I don't know what the next step is. Totally. So obviously this is God this is being like, here's the next step. Freaking love that. <laughs> That's exactly what happened with, with, with me with Amazing Race. Stealing Angels ended, and we got a call to do Amazing Race. And at that point, I thought my life was over. Like, yeah. I had no idea what to do. Yeah. And then it just appears. Yeah. It's amazing. So Isn't you go crazy? on The Voice. Yeah. And you freaking get three chairs that turn around. Yeah. Christina, Pharrell, and Adam. Adam, yeah. And you went with Pharrell. 
Yep. <sighs> I love Pharrell. Is he as oh amazing God. as he seems? Yeah. He just radiates like his higher. Oh, he's like on another level than How normal people. There? I don't know. I will say that in, when we were talking earlier about living in the moment, like working with him really elevated me to that. Tell well, me what he taught you. It wasn't, and it wasn't even anything he said. It was just being around him. You picked up on how yeah. he did his life? Well, just seeing how he interacts with people. Like, he's never anywhere else. If you're talking to him, you have his undivided attention. He's really? never looking at his phone. He's never looking off into space. He's never worried about what's happening next. He's always right here. Really? Yeah, it's incredible. It's kind of intense, actually. Like, he's with you. Oh, he's with you 100%. He, does he want to know about you? Yeah, I think he cares a lot. I think that he is um, just 100% present all the time, which I don't know how you get to that point, but I'd like to. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that he brought in Lionel Richie to work with us one week, and I was still on his team at that time, and so I got to work with Lionel Richie, and same thing. Really? Yeah, they're almost the same person. It's really weird. <laughs> really? Yeah, and it's very intense to work with two people like that at one time because I was like, oh, God, I think they can see into my soul. <laughs> like, they see I'm they like, see me. I'm like, they're judging me totally right now. <laughs> they, they can see it all. Yeah, totally. That's how you feel. And yeah. I was like, okay, I've got to get to that level because that is the difference between, I think, being ultimately, like, really successful Yes. And staying in this like mundane place. Cause I feel like people who Holy are really, cow, that's a big revelation right there. Yeah, it is. And it was like a huge moment for me. Cause I'm like, Oh, people who are really successful know how to live in the moment and they know how to make people feel really important and they know how to, you know what I mean? It's a very selfless way wow. to live. And even though they're a superstar and everyone's like, Oh, well they're a superstar. It's easy for them. They have all this yeah. money and fame. No way. Like being no. a superstar, I think is actually to get, be a superstar and have that awareness it's a lot. That is almost like a divine state of being. being. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I think so. I think that, um, well, plus it's just, I mean, being a superstar is just so much, I don't know how they do everything they do. Like their schedules are insane. So to be that, and that's the thing, you can let it, you can let it ruin you and you can let it make you crazy or you can learn to live in that place where you're just in the moment all the time. And then actually maybe you just see like God and you see yeah. the truth all the time. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know, but I would like to figure out how to get there. <laughs> okay, so you were saying that's when you really learned that skill because you yeah. saw you witnessed that. Yeah, I just I think just being around it was like it was, it's like okay, this is another level of like living. Mm -hmm. I don't you know I don't know how else what to a blessing it. to get to experience that. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and especially like to experience it with Pharrell and then for Lionel Richie to come in and be the same way. It was like a total revelation. I was like, okay. It was like another a double 11 again. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, exactly. It's yeah. like everything's happening in twos here, but it's, um, yeah, I learned a lot. So then you ended up getting stolen by Blake. Mm -hmm. So how was that? What? Cause you go from <laughs> Pharrell, who's his own amazing thing to Blake, who is his own amazing yeah. thing in a different way. Yeah. I think the thing that the common thing about, I mean, I feel like anybody, all the, I mean, everybody that I've dealt with, I guess, on, that's really successful is like they, the way they give back to other people. I mean, I feel like with Blake, it's like he's always like, he's just such a caring, kind human and like he really cares about other people. And so I found that really interesting, like especially with, I guess with artists probably more so. Because do you think you attract more of what you are? Yeah, so I think so. Maybe that's why these people are so loved and obviously they have the talent, but like they're pouring that out too. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, Blake was, I, I just adore him. I His just think personality is amazing. Yeah. He's hilarious. He's so charming. He's a good person. He cares. Adorable um, and sassy. Yeah. He's very sassy. I love that about <laughs> him. He doesn't care. No, he really doesn't. And that's that. And that's another common thing. Like they just, that you, when you get to the point where you don't care. Yeah. I think it's like, I mean, obviously they care, but it's right. like they just, they're just authentically themselves. Do you think it's because they've had so much success, so much failure by the terms of failure? You're like, once you get to that point, like, you know, the wave is the wave. Like, yeah. Do you think they just learn how to write it? I think, I think so. Yeah. I think you probably get to a point where you're just like, you know, what's you, ha you realize you have no control. Mm -hmm. So you're like, I'm just going to be me and do my thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's so. all you can control. Yeah. Okay, so then you get on Blake's team. Mm -hmm. Did you love working with Blake? I loved working with Blake. He was very cool in that he really 
he knew me so he mm-hmm. knew like i he knew what you're capable what of. i was capable of yeah and he <clears throat> he trusted me like i was like i want to do a beatles song this week he's like okay let's do it i want to do my, my original song in the finale he's like i'll go to bat for you for that you know and and i got to do those things because he really i think believed in me and wa- wanted to help me you know achieve that on the show so dang that's cool that it was is really a cool. cool show it's a cool show the voice is cool yeah i got to do i mean and it doesn't always work i don't know if it works out for everybody like it worked out for me but i was very blessed in the way that i got to really sing the songs i wanted to sing and i would come in you know tyler and tyler would come over to the hotel when she wasn't supposed to <laughs> um and we would work on arrangements so i would come in with an arrangement and a you know a a chords and you know everything charted out for the band and just um i think they appreciated it you know they had a lot to do and so they were like oh shit she brought you know um it's ready yeah it's ready (laughs) she brought an arrangement it's ready to do so we would go i'd go in and be like i want to do it this way how Um, great that you knew how you wanted to do it and you could take it so seriously mm because you know i feel like maybe that's the experience that you had that really could Mm -hmm. pay off in this moment because you knew what needed to be done and how to do it yeah there's a lot of people who are talented but haven't had the experience wouldn't know that yeah I think I was I was ready I mean it was my time you were ready for sure mm-hmm. like I think it was meant to be that I was on at that point because it was like okay I know I know who I am I know what I want and it was an opportunity for me to really show America like okay this is me now this yeah. is like me minus still magnolia like on my yes. own just like here I am I like going to cry <laughs> like I, I literally it's so powerful like it's so crazy and I love how like connected and aware you are to it all too you yeah. know and like your whole journey it all makes sense isn't it weird how yeah. it all makes sense like when it you starts, look back on it <laughs> it starts to make sense like obviously we have a long journey ahead yeah but it kind of gets to that place where you're like okay I get why this shit show happened or like why this great thing happened and then this didn't and then right pieces well it makes it all, it all really <laughs> brings you to a point where it makes I mean it makes you who you are mm-hmm. and you learn so like I feel like even this year especially has been such a learning year for me like I feel like last year was such a year of just like reaping you know and like okay this is awesome like I'm on the voice and my EP came out and it did really well and like I was like oh this is awesome and then this this past year has just kind of been harder this has been a hard 2016 has been a hard year I it's think it's been for a, a lot really of people, hard year it has been a hard year I have felt it like yeah a, a lot of people that I know it's been a like I don't know like a building year or like yeah. just a uh year yeah it's been for for me it's definitely been a learning year I yes, don't know how to, to explain it. Mm-hmm. It's like I've been. What have you learned this year? Um, you know what? I did a lot of stuff with um, flood relief for my hometown because um, I'm from Louisiana and there was this terrible flood that just happened. that was like awful and people, everyone lost their homes and it was just terrible. devastating. And so I put together um, a drive. I got a U-Haul. I was like, I don't know. It's just funny. I don't know. I just was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But I'm going to do it and I want to help. So I was like, I'm just going to start, just do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was kind of, I think that that was a moment this year where God was like, okay, when I tell you to do something, you just (laughs) do it and you don't have to know how you're going to do it. It's just going to, it's going to work itself out and you have to trust me. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I got this U-Haul and I started making phone calls and I started gathering and it was like, all of a sudden I had this full U-Haul and I'm driving it down to Louisiana. And then I'm like, where am I going to distribute? And then this high school comes along and it's like my, my high school that I went to. And so we set everything up, we gave this stuff out. Then I'm like, Oh, I started this GoFundMe. Well, I earned $10,000. I'm like, okay, well now I have $10,000 to spend. And so I flew down to Louisiana again. I got another U-Haul. I went and I bought all of these things. I brought them to these people individually. It's like, i and honestly, I just met people along the way that helped me. <clears throat> they just appeared. It, they just appeared. I mean, I literally met a woman in a parking lot who was um, part of a motorcycle group. And then <laughs> I ended up meeting all these, like, um, these, bi- these uh, what do you call them? I bikers. don't know. Bikers. Yeah, that's the word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I met all these bikers and they're like, they had all lost their homes and their businesses. But they were like, well, we have a parking lot. They were like, we'll help, help you set up tomorrow morning. And they were like, we know everybody. We're like, we'll get people here. Because a lot of people just couldn't get out of their house yeah. to come get stuff. Um, so it was like, I think that that was one of the biggest learning um, events, I guess, in my life this year. Because I was like, okay. It made me realize like one person can really do a lot if you really 
Answer allow. The call? Yeah, you have to allow it to happen and allow you, allow yourself to be used. And so, I don't know. That was it. It takes a lot of effort too. It's you a have lot to put of in the work. Oh, I was dead. I mean, I was so tired by the end of it because we weren't sleeping. We drove. I mean, I drove that U-Haul all the way myself. You know, and um. And how crazy that you even thought to do that because so many people just see it on the news and they don't even think about helping, even if they're yeah. from the place. You know. Yeah, I think for me, it's just and that's part of the learning, too. It's like I realize like, OK, yeah, I like to do music. It's awesome. I love to perform. But at the end of the day, like, what is the point in all this? And so for me, it's like, OK, I have a name at this point. I've built up to having a name to be able to call, you know, uh, greatergood.org and get mm-hmm. them to donate seven million pounds of dog food or whatever it is. Seven thousand pounds. Sorry. Um, or whatever it is, yeah. you know, it's like I can do that because of who I am. And so doors are open to me. And so, so it's, why not use it for good? Well, that's it. I think that's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but so many people don't get that point. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's why it's like, it, that's what I've learned more than anything in the last couple of years. It's like, okay, I have to use this now because otherwise I'm just, it's going to waste. Totally. You know? Gosh, Megan, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's, you are reaching Pharrell status. I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up. <laughs> you know? I love that. Yeah. And so then, so this year has been, okay, reverse, actually. How do you know the difference between wanting to do something? Mm-hmm. Like, because I have really been trying to tune in with my gut and my calling and like mm-hmm. answering the calls that I do feel like are meant for me. Mm-hmm. as opposed to just seeing something and feeling it, but really not feeling like that's the road I'm supposed to take, you know, cause we're right. not all supposed to do the same things, but we are, how do you know when it is the call you're supposed to answer from your higher source? Oh God. Like um, how do you, ch- what are your checkpoints that you check within yourself? Like to be honest with you, it's all gut. Like, but you know, sometimes you get a gut feeling, but then there's like resistance. Yeah. There's like resistance. And then sometimes it's like, yeah, but then there's like this whole butt category. Yeah. And then other times it's like, yeah, it's going to be freaking hard, but yeah. You know, like, do you, right. you know what I'm talking about? Is this like, is this making sense? No, it <laughs> totally makes sense. I think, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know the, the complete answer. I know that when I think something is wrong, it almost always is. Mm-hmm. And when I go against what I know is right and I do something anyways, because I'm like, oh, why not? Let's try it for a few months or whatever it is. It always ends up, I, I knew you knew. I knew. So now you don't even have to like try it anymore. Now you're no, like, I've tried that before. Not happening again, mm-hmm. you know, or, um, yeah, this flood relief stuff is terrifying to me and I don't, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I, I just know I need to do it. Like you just felt it. Yeah. I just felt it. I was like, I know God's going to open the doors and I know it's going to work out because it's, it's just what I'm supposed to do. It's just all over you. Yeah. It's just a knowing. Uh huh. I think it comes with, with, um, just living and and just doing things and and you know learning I don't know how do you stay connected to your higher thing whatever that is oh man um you know I think it's a lot about I think you have to live in a constant state of prayer I know that sounds no, strange I but I think but not that like on your knees like oh no God, forgive me for my sins and no it's I, not that kind it's of not that kind of thing prayer. it's a very it's very much like an everyday 24 7 constant communication and I think that that is the, the thing that like learning to, to be like Pharrell and living in the moment. Mm-hmm. That's what he's doing constantly. He's mm-hmm. living he's living in that space. And so I think when you're connected like that all the time, you know, and, and it's hard. It's not easy to be connected all the time. Right. You, things happen and you get disappointed and, you know, it's it's like and you and, you know, I, I struggle with depression. So I go into these holds where I'm like, oh, God, you know, the, the bottom's falling. out. The bottom's falling out. Over. I mean, yeah, nothing's perfect for sure. Oh, God, I can do that too. be like, oh, God, I'm terrible. I have no talent. It's yeah. all sucking. Like, yeah. Life what am over. I doing? <laughs> my life's over. Why am I t- still trying to do this at my age or whatever? But it's it, you know, it's and that's all just those are all lies. You know, I think you have to just eventually you get back up and you get back you know you're never too far off course I mm-hmm. think you just have to learn to get back into it and be like okay today's the new day oh Megan <laughs> I freaking love it I love you no I knew you were like <laughs> this but I yeah. didn't know you were like this like all the way <laughs> I really didn't yeah this is amazing so is that another reason why you have freedom um yeah I think so 
you just mean in my career and my life just i just feel like you have freedom everywhere in your life right now like with the mm-hmm. music you're making like the way you're expressing yourself like you will get on facebook and say something that could be potentially rub someone the wrong way when you know like before sorry just oh it's okay. in here. you know like i feel like sometimes people want to like walk on eggshells and make sure they say everything perfect or try to present the right image and i feel like you have like shattered that and you're like this is me this is what I love. This is the music I'm making. And this is how I'm going to do my life. Yeah. I'm really at that point. I can see it. <laughs> and you know, I can see it in everything you do. Yeah. And I, I, you know what? It's, I don't know. I don't know how to be any other way anymore mm-hmm. because I'm just tired of, I don't want to live a lie. Yeah. I don't want to pretend to be something I'm not. I don't want to be dishonest about how I feel about something because it's just, it doesn't serve anybody. It doesn't do any good. So, okay. Yeah. Do you think the 30s are for that, too? Like, yeah, that's why it's like because I feel like the music business is so like everybody's always like, oh, you're a woman. Oh, you're you're hit, you tell everybody you're 29 or whatever. You know, it's like I feel like there's this like stigma with being 30 and being a woman mm-hmm. that it's bad. Right. There is. I yes, mean, it, totally. It's crazy. I always was told if you haven't made it in the, in the industry by the time you're 30, might as well hang it up. Yeah. That is just not true. It's not true. And it's... Because uh, God has plans that nobody can define. Yeah. I think so. And I think that <coughs> getting into my 30s and being... It's like, you know, I finally... I actually voted this year. For, and I haven't voted ever since I was 18. But I told my mom the other day, and I know that sounds terrible, but I told my mom, I was like, you know what? I'm glad I waited. Because it's, I'm finally to a point in my life where I'm like, I know exactly how I feel about things. I know exactly what I want, what I don't want. Like, I just was like, you know what? It was a good time for me to, mm-hmm. to do that. And so, I don't know. I feel like that with everything in life right now. I'm like, okay. I think that's what the 30s are for. Yeah. Like, you're just walking Coming into in, your own. in your authenticity. Yeah. It feels good. It does. So, what are you looking forward to for 2017? <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be easier. Oh, but your video really fast. Yeah. Exes and Friends. Yes. Came out. Yes. Holy <laughs> shiitake mushrooms. You are a bombshell. You're so sweet. <laughs> bombshell. The song is so infectious. I couldn't get enough of it. And you have a celebrity uh, cameo. So oh tell me gosh. about how that came about. Um. Well, I, we had the song and um, I actually wrote it with Tyler and Tyler, my boyfriend, Tyler, Tyler. Kane, he's amazing. And um, my best friend, Julie, more of a, we wrote the song and we were like, okay, this really feels like a single. And so um, we finished the song and I was like, okay, I really want to make a video for the song. The video is awesome. It's so funny, man. I So I'm going to my friend's wedding, Jeremy and Gavin. Jeremy does all my photography. And um, I meet this guy on the way up to the wedding. His, this guy, Zach. And um, he's like, we, we, we kind of start talking and then I get up there and they're kind of wanting me to sing for their wedding. And so I sing and then Zach's like, we have to make a video. And Zach is working on, he did drunk history on comedy central. Oh, nice. He's working on, um, still the King and you know, on CMT. And so he's like, he's like, this is what I do, you know? So of course you met someone yeah. because you're, you're walking in such a, on such your path now. Well, These yeah. Show up. And that's the thing. I didn't know how I was going to make this video. Cause I'm like, I don't have $50,000 right <laughs> now, you know? And, and, and we always do, you know, we get creative because we have to, when you're independent and you don't have a budget, you have to be creative. Mm-hmm. So I meet this guy and he's friends with my friend, Bridget, who's my, you know, acting coach. And so, um, we're like, well, let's just do it. You know, Bridget. So Bridget and Zach, um, directed, and then they called, um, Bridget called some people from the Nashville show who were camera operators. So they came um, and donated their time. And Amazing. yeah, it just kind of all worked itself out. And how did Juan? Juan Pablo. How um, did he get in here? So funny. I was sitting there <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I know nothing about The Bachelor. He was like the Latin lover. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know anything about The Bachelor. Like, I don't <laughs> even, like, I just started watching it this past year. Me too, with The Bachelorette with JoJo? Yeah, totally. That was the first time yeah. I first started watching Actually, it. I think it was The Bachelor before that, but okay. yeah, but I watched I watched that one and JoJo. Those are the only Actually, two I've watched. Ben Higgins. Ben. I watched Ben God, and JoJo. God, I'm on your page. Okay. Like, so I didn't know anything, <laughs> Yeah. but I knew the name Juan Pablo, mm-hmm. and I knew his reputation, <laughs> so I was like, I really want kind of a jerky guy to play the role of my lover in this video, and... I tell my friend Michelle, I'm like, what about Juan Pablo? And she knows a lot of people because she worked at E! News for 10 years. And so she's like, I know his manager. Let me reach out. And so she just reached out and 
he uh, we got on a Skype and I was like, oh, this guy seems really nice, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, shoot. Um, you can't help it that all the ladies love him. Right. <laughs> it's not, not his, his fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not his fault. And yeah. I and I didn't watch. So I don't know how it was edited or anything like that. But I was like, oh, he's so nice. And he wanted to do it. And so he um, he came to town and, and played my played my love interest in the video. It was awesome. Yeah. He did a great job. He right? did a great job. He was great, and he, we went. To, we actually went to the CMA Awards together. I saw that too. To kind of promote this, promote the uh, the video, and so um, it was cool. Where was that room where you had like different color outfits of the same mm-hmm. outfit, but they're a different color, and you're like on the ground? It's the coolest room ever. Where are you filming that? Um, my friend Jeremy, who does all my f- photography too, he um he created it. It was just like literally two um, panels, and you know what it was? It looks like it's padded, but it's actually um one of those down comforters oh we clipped it <laughs> he's genius i'm like What's i don't his last name? um jeremy um cohort oh my god is it my Jer- is it no there? my brain oh my god <laughs> do you ever do this where I, you're I like forget all the time who it is oh my god we'll come back to one you. of my best friends i'm out of my mind <laughs> hey it happens oh my god well his well, lovers gavin and <laughs> they're a great couple and i love them so much <laughs> He would die if he saw this. Oh, my God. <laughs> we can edit it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Jeremy created it. Yeah. So Jeremy created it. And oh, I had seen, you know what? I wanted a padded room for the video. And I then I got, it. I was on his page and I saw where he had done a photo shoot in a padded room. I'm like, how did you do that? Can you do that for me? Hmm. And he's like, yeah, I still have the set figured out. He's like, all you have to do is clip those things on and it's done. I'm like, okay. Oh, Glad love. you're so creative. It costs nothing to do. But um, it looked so expensive. That video to me looked so expensive. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, literally. You're so well done. It's crazy. It's crazy how like, you know, we managed to get all these people to kind of come together to make it happen. And, you know, it is hard. It is hard. I will say because I, you know, I'm spending my own money on everything mm-hmm. right now. So I'm kind of in this place where it's like, okay, I'm making money, but then I'm spending all of it. Right. <laughs> I know. It's kind of so like terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah. I'm still, you just, you have to invest in yourself. And so. That's what I've been doing, but I'm also, you know, self-managing, putting this, I released through TuneCore, you know, independently, and I have a, we're a team of three people, you know, just my best friend, Julie, and my friend, Michelle, and then, you know, obviously, Tyler helps me a lot, my friend, Christy helps a lot, but it's literally, like, just everybody's just pouring into this thing, and none of us is really making any money yet, so. I love it. It's I feel like that's when stuff really takes off. I really do. I do too. I think so. So tell me what you're looking forward to for 2017. And where can we find your new song? And your no, new, s- new stuff is up. It's all over, you know, anywhere you can get digital music, okay. iTunes. iTunes, Megan yeah. Lindsay. Okay. And then the YouTube has um, got the video. And then there's a acoustic video I just put out of the song as well. So um, there's a lot of stuff online. I'm really excited. I'm putting out, I'm going to put out a new record in the new year. So I'm thinking February or March okay. trying to figure out when we can get it done. Um, I just started a Patreon page. So What's that? Patreon is awesome. It's a place where your fans can go. It's almost like an exclusive club online. And so they can kind of go and follow your journey and they can, um, pledge to, towards your, your journey. Love or that. towards your record or whatever it is and so people can do a dollar a month or they can do two dollars a month or right. 10 or 20 or whatever and each thing has like a different you know like I'll do um you know sign I'll send out signed eight by tens I post con you know exclusive content that kind of thing that's awesome so it's cool it's kind of a cool get like a secret backstage yeah. fan way like, for them exclusive. to be involved yeah and they can kind of you know I'll do a thing where I'll have them vote on the next single like things like that mm-hmm. so it's kind of a cool like it's almost like its own private Facebook page I guess yeah so um I started that to kind of help with the new record and then um yeah I just signed a deal with Nutrisystem what and by the way you've dropped 30 <laughs> pounds I have year? since March yeah holy cow you crazy always been stunning but you, you are like amazing like so svelte you're, you're like dude a, a vision <laughs> Please, Has thank it been you. hard? It's really hard. Yeah, it's hard to lose weight. But I do think that that, you know, definitely Nutrisystem helped boost that and helped me um, get on the right track. And then, um, you know, just keeping it off is the, the thing. So That's amazing. But Megan, my I mean, lifestyle is different now. So what you have done with your life, <laughs> the whole journey, it's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to wrap with yeah. Leave Your Light. Mm-hmm. After all of this that you've been through. And all of like the beautiful journey. What is your inspiration that you've gathered, just gathered from people and that you want to share? Like what's your light that you want to spread? Oh man. Um, 
I think ultimately it it's really about giving back. I th- I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say other than I do think like, I think we do all this and we're like, people get, especially in the music business, we get so self-involved and we get so much like, oh, me, 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 I, I, I. And it's like this video and this thing. And it's like, you're so consumed with this, the business part of the music business. And I think really to just keep your eyes open to, to other people and, and what's going on around you and um, just to, to pour into other people and give back. I mean, I think that that's when I'm, when I'm the happiest, you know, I think doing, just doing this flood relief stuff this past year and doing this stuff I, d- I do with, with the dogs. I do a lot of rescue dog stuff. I love dogs, I love dogs so much. <sighs> um, and I do stuff with Beagle Freedom Project. And I think that that is our purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that that um, this that this past year, the last two years, has really have really taught me that. So I, that. I don't know. I love that. Whatever it's worth. Love you, Lindsay. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best. You I love you. Me. Love you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>